Hey, we're Anna Jennifer Smith with Marriage After God. Helping you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. And today we're going to be tackling the question, can you fall out of love in marriage? Welcome to the Marriage After God podcast, where we believe that marriage was meant for more than just happily ever after. I'm Jennifer, also known as Unveiled Wife. And I'm Aaron, also known as Husband Revolution. We have been married for over a decade. And so far, we have four young children. We have been doing marriage ministry online for over seven years through blogging and social media. With the desire to inspire couples to keep God at the center of their marriage, encouraging them to walk in faith every day. We believe the Christian marriage should be an extraordinary one, full of life, love, and power that can only be found by chasing after God. Together. Thank you for joining us in this journey as we chase boldly after God's will for our life together. This is Marriage After God. Hey, thanks for joining us on another episode of the Marriage After God podcast. Uh, we just want to invite you at the end of the podcast or anytime really to leave us a star rating and a review. That helps uh, other people find our podcast. And we also love reading those reviews. So if you want to take a minute and uh, again, the easiest way to do that is just to hit one of the stars at the bottom of the app and that will just give us a rating right there. Or you can leave us a text review and we love reading those. Uh, so we just want to invite you to do that. Another way you can support the podcast is by shopping on our online store, shop.marriageaftergod.com. We have a ton of resources that we wrote for you guys, um, including some uh, prayer books. But also, I want to take a minute to highlight our newest book that we wrote for you, Marriage After God. Um, in fact, uh, today's episode, we're going to be sharing from Gary Thomas's book, but he wrote, read Marriage After God, and this is what he had to say about it. Marriage After God is not your typical marriage book. Rather than focus on the common symptoms of marriage dysfunction and lack of intimacy, Marriage After God dives into and focuses on the root causes, the need for faith, biblical truth, fellowship, ministry, and God-ordained vision. The Smiths take the wise path of urging us to grow a better marriage by focusing first on growing closer to God. Yeah, so we just want to invite you to pick up a copy of that. Uh, we wrote it to encourage your marriage, to find out what God's purpose for your marriage is. And uh, we believe God has a purpose for every one of us in the body, especially your marriage. So please pick up a copy of that book today, and uh, we'd love to get it in your hands. All right, as always, we're going to jump into our icebreaker question. Aaron, why don't you start by answering this? What is your favorite game or activity to do with the kids right now? Uh, I think I really like wrestling on the ground with the kids. <laughs> they all climb on top of me. Uh, it partly, it lets me lay down <laughs> for a little bit. Um, but, uh, or building forts with our huge, big mm -hmm. couch pillows. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. I, I, with Elliot specifically, I like practicing drawing. We put on like a, a YouTube show and, mm -hmm. and learn how to draw a, a dragon or a dinosaur or something like that. And that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Some other games that I would, um, say we've been really into lately is, Blockus or Blocus. I don't really know. Oh, yeah, I just played that with them. Say that. Super fun. Super easy to catch on to. And um, we've been playing Battleship a lot. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. But he gets frustrated when I win. So <laughs> well, everybody, every, everybody gets frustrated when they don't win. Yeah. <laughs> so we're working through some of those things. But yeah, those are some games that we. Awesome. Good question. We love with the kids right now. So before we get into our topic, uh, you know, discussing whether or not we can fall out of love in our marriage. I want to read a quote from Sacred Marriage by Gary Thomas on page 157. The opposite of biblical love isn't hate, it's apathy. To stop moving toward our spouse is to stop loving him or her. It's holding back from the very purpose of marriage. Well, I and, feel like that answers the question right there. <laughs> yeah, and it well, it, it's it's a great start to the, the conversation yeah. because I feel like people might under, like, might think like, of course, yeah, you can't like fall in out of love, but that's kind of where our world's gone in the secular world and in the Christian world. And we see it often in mm -hmm. emails we get and, and messages we get on our social media. And we just thought it's a very uh, pertinent topic to bring up with our communities. It's something that we've had to deal with in our own marriage, mm -hmm. just feeling that like, well, maybe this isn't going to work. Maybe this isn't right. Mm -hmm. And just maybe dispel some of the, the lies about it. Mm -hmm. Think biblically and clearly about it. Yeah. So that those uh, that might be feeling this way uh, can think better. Yeah, I think pursue God on the, the decision. Yeah. So when I thought about this topic to discuss today, uh, the first thing that came to my mind is we need to be aware of the things that we're saying, kind of the phrases that we use to describe the life that we're living, the way, the things that we're choosing. And so I just kind of went back to the beginning of like, okay, so where did this phrase come from? You know, what does it mean? Yeah. Cause we grew up that this is like, this is what this we know. Is, I want to fall in love. Yeah. Everyone wants to fall in love. Yeah. Or like people ask you, oh, when did you fall in love with each other? Or Right. Uh, like it was yeah. a, a day. <laughs> yeah. So um, so I Googled, you know, where this 
phrase came from. And Wikipedia says this, falling in love is the development of strong feelings of attachment and love, usually toward another person. The term is metaphorical, emphasizing that the process, like the physical act of falling, is sudden, uncontrollable, and leaves the lover in a vulnerable state, similar to fall ill or fall into a trap. And then I as I- it uses those negative I know, I was going to say, as that. I kept looking into this, I found other phrases like fall asleep or fall behind. Um, someone else likened it to a surprise, like falling down the stairs. <laughs> Yeah, they're all they're all like these like negative connotations with falling. Yeah, uh, which is really unfortunate that one of the most uh, s- supposed to be the most euphoric and most powerful and magical things that we get to experience is love. Yeah, with another person, mm-hmm. and we've we've turned it into with our you know common you know language and our you know all the things that we mm-hmm. how we describe things into such a. It, it's so weak in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. It kind of strips the beauty of one, knowing what true love is and then, cho- you know, choosing it because here it's making you sound like it's just happening to you that right. there's no control in any of it. Yeah. And I think that's one of the um, traps of the enemy, you know, falling into the trap, like you yeah. said, uh, that he's, he's taken something so beautiful that God invented and created and something that he's given as a gift to his children mm. and boiled it down. You know, if, if he can change the terms and the words and the definitions, then he can change the meanings mm. of things. And so I, I think that's the first thing that our listeners can start to think about is if, if they fell in love, Right. And I know people are really thinking like, I think you're just, you know, going overboard. Like, what's the big deal? Like, it's just a a phrase, but it's not just a phrase because like you said, if we're not aware of the things that we're saying, we don't realize that we define things Mm -hmm. by the things we say. Mm -hmm. Words do have meaning. And if we say them over and over and over again, they have meaning and they, and they, and if we believe them, like if I believe we fell in love, then it's not hard to believe that we can fall out of love. Right. Because like the definition, like it's something that happened to me. I had no control over it. You know, we were just in this whirlwind and oh my gosh, the passions and you're beautiful and I love you. And like, oh, we have, we have similar, you know, things that we like and, you know, oh, and the way you think and just, you're so funny and all these things, which are totally Mm -hmm. good things. Mm -hmm. And they totally add to my attraction to you and our attraction to another person and draw us and actually do invoke emotions in us and feelings and those are all given to us by God. Mm-hmm. But if we boil down love to just those things, those feelings, then the moment those things change, the moment those things disappear, the moment those things that we used to be enamored by now bug us, mm-hmm. because that is so, that happens. Like, oh, I used to, it was so cute the way you would say that one thing. And now that way you say that all the time really bugs me and I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. So here's the other um, just sad, sad part about, all of this is that, you know, in marriage, we come, we come up against this very thing that you're talking about is if, um, things change, right? So let's say there's hard circumstances or, um, you really get to know each other after years and years of marriage. And there's just things that, like you said, bug you. Um, if, if you say, if you're, if we say that we fell into love with one another and that goes back to like this sudden thing that there's no control over, who's to say that we can't fall in love even after we're married? Oh, you know what I mean? Right. And then so someone like, else comes along and no, I've done it again. I've fallen in love again, but not with you. That's yeah, and, dangerous. And you know what? I couldn't, I had no control. We've actually heard, heard this. Like, yeah. well, I, you know, I, I'm sorry. Like I, I love you still, but you know, this other person came along and they just, yeah. they're feeding me, you know, my, yeah. my love tank. And like, they're giving me, it, it becomes a justification for sin and nobody's taking responsibility. That's what I'm trying to get at. Right. And I, I think that's what we want to talk about in this and, and where we're going to try and go with this is to take away the decision and the control and the thoughtfulness in love is to take away the power of the love in the first place Mm -hmm. of what God's doing. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that God is love. Mm -hmm. So he invented it. He designed it. It's his creation. It's something that it's not even, he is love. It's, it's, it's existed with him. And so for us to boil it, like I fell in love, I fell out of love. It's something I go in and out of. And it's, and it's not a choice. It's just whatever I feel at the moment. And what's so dangerous about that is the, the Bible tells us to not operate in our feelings and in our, that's what, that's what's called carnal. Mm-hmm. Our carnal flesh is our feelings, 
our, the, the chemical reactions in our brain, which is exactly what feelings are. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a burst of um, oxytocin and you get a burst of, um, you know, all these different, these different hormones that are good hormones that God created us with. And we've dis we def defined something very spiritual with a very fleshly reaction. Mm -hmm. And I think that spiritual things definitely bring those emotional reactions, which is why they're good. God made it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but love's not defined by those things. Mm -hmm. And a perfect example is, you know, um, if we're thinking about falling in and out of love or when things are hard, I must not be in love anymore. This not, they must not love me anymore. Or maybe they've, they've fallen out of love with me or we're falling out of love with each other. I just think of Christ on the cross. You know, he, he goes into the garden of Gethsemane and he prays, Lord, let this cup pass from him. He's, and he's praying that the, the suffering he was about to partake, that he was about to be obedient to endure was for his bride. Yeah. And he's saying, I don't know if I can do this, but I'm not going to choose you, Lord, you choose. And his will was that he went to the cross because mm -hmm. salvation was at hand mm -hmm. for the, for the body of Christ, for the, for his, for the world. Mm -hmm. And so if, you know, if we look at Christ, like, was he, would he fall out of love when he's on the cross? He's like, Oh, this is too hard. I, I just don't love them anymore. <laughs> no, he loved us beyond what his flesh wanted. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's exactly what I want to talk about. Like the power of love is much, it goes way beyond how we feel. Yeah. Because babe, there was times that you didn't feel in love with me. No, definitely. When there was like in those early years when our circumstances were really hard. Yeah. I didn't feel very much in love with you. And he didn't even brought us to a point of, seriously contemplating divorce and separation, but there were other factors involved, you know, walking in sin and, um, you know, just isolating, choosing to isolate from each other time and time again led to, you know, that in our marriage. Yeah. We, we tried, we, we stayed together. We were friends to an extent and there was areas of our, our marriage, you know, intimacy, uh, sexual intimacy that wasn't exactly how we wanted to be. It was mm -hmm. actually the opposite of what we wanted. And it led to, thoughts in us, sinful thoughts of, well, uh, and I remember me thinking, man, I should have like experimented before I got married. Yeah, I should have had more partners before I got married. And I remember having thoughts of, well, maybe we're just not compatible and, and physically, I thought, emotionally, yeah, I mentally. I just thought like, we're not for each other. And uh, wasn't there even a season where you looked outside of our marriage? You didn't go actually do anything, but you desired oh, for sure. other, like another man. And there was, I, your heart wasn't with me. Yeah. And that is what happens when how we feel is defining what we do. Yeah. And um, I want to get to, you know, some of those things that come up, you know, reasons why people would feel as though they fell out of love with one another, because mm -hmm. I think it's good for us to acknowledge them and address them because we're all experiencing this thing called marriage. And if yeah. we're not willing to confront the the hard things, then, um, you know, maybe our, our hearts would be prone to want to avoid them or, or, you know, not confront them and that's right. not good. Well, and before you get into that, I, I think the reason, um, I, again, going back to the beginning of this, of like love being something that you fall into, it's, it's accidental. Mm -hmm. It's, I had no control over it. Uh, it leaves room because that's what we, be, we believe about it. It leaves room for us to use that lack of control that, that like it has nothing to do with me. Therefore, when the things we're about to talk about come up, well, I'm just not in love anymore. And like, you know, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. You can't force me to love someone I don't love anymore. That uh, unfortunate, but that's how it is. Mm -hmm. Thanks God. Mm -hmm. You know, like we've and given then it's ourselves his fault for making us wrong or something or, or, or yeah, or taking away the love or whatever it is. Yeah. And now we have an, we have an excuse that's outside of us. Mm -hmm. Well, see, I'm, I mean, I would, it, you know, too bad. I don't love him anymore. I would love to have still loved him, but it's just not working out. It's not where my heart's at anymore. And I'm moving on. And so it leaves a back door. Mm. To, that you don't have to be responsible to go through. You just, you just get brought through it mm -hmm. without any of your con own control. I and mean, when in reality, it's not, that's not true. Yeah. We want everyone to hear this right now. We have an obligation to each other. It's called oneness. <laughs> it's called a covenant. It's called, uh, it's not, it's not just an earthly contract. It's not just like a, well, if you fulfill your end of the bargain, I'll fulfill mine. That's actually not a bit what biblical marriage looks like, sounds like, smells like at all. <laughs> It's, um, it's a choice that we make to walk in because Christ chose to walk in his relationship, um, it, it, going to the cross, mm -hmm. regardless of how we responded to him. Mm -hmm. And that's our example. It's exactly the picture we get in Ephesians 5. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, bride, you're the church. Mm -hmm. Hey, husband, you're, the, you're Christ. You're, you're the picture of Christ in this marriage. Mm -hmm. And this is how you act. 
And so it, it's not something, as long as it's something that happens to us, we have no control over it. We have no responsibility to it. Mm. So I got to bring this up real quick. This isn't in our notes and it's not the direction we were going to take it, but I think it's important to ask. And so I'm just going to put it out there and then maybe you guys can have a conversation about this with your spouses. We can even talk about it later. But, um, you know, you, you talked about love being a choice. You talked about it being a powerful experience and not mm-hmm. something that, you know, we don't have control over or based on feelings. Um, my question is, do we fall in and out of love with God? Because I would, I would look at Christian mm. culture and say there's a lot of people that, that base their relationship with God off of how they feel. And what they get. Or what they get they, out of it. Yeah, what they believe they deserve. And so you see this tendency of flowing in and out of God during seasons of, I'm for him, I'm not. I'm for mm-hmm. him, I'm not. And so I think that's important to consider this question in light of our relationship with well, him. Well, be- before we move on to some of the reasons why people might feel like they fell out of love, let's talk about how we fell in and out of love with God. Okay. It, because of our marriage, because of the things that we were feeling and going through and experiencing, the hardships in our sexual relationship, the hardships with, with the sins that we were choosing to walk in and being unrepented of, uh, and walking in total immaturity and uh, bitterness and anger. Man, we, you had your own relationship de- de- dealings with God where mm-hmm. you were just angry at Him because you're like, God, I deserve I, I, a good marriage. Yeah, I felt like I did all the right things to equal a good marriage, like it was some sort of formula. So when I didn't get it, I was mad at him because I believe that he was powerful enough to just make everything perfect, give me everything I want, um, and it be beautiful. And not mm-hmm. and I w- I and I believe this. I truly believe that it wasn't just for my benefit that I had a perfect marriage, that it would be so that we can do ministry together for God. And yeah, there's good reasons. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's always good reasons. And well, I thought, we want to be happy. We want to like have joy in our marriage. And but it's this relationship with God was built on what He owed you. Yeah. And, and like you said, like you, you, you fell in and out of love with God the same way you fell in and out of love with me. Mm-hmm. I couldn't give you what you thought you deserved mm-hmm. in a husband. Mm-hmm. I wasn't giving it to you. I, it's not that I couldn't give it to you. I wasn't treating you the way you thought you deserved to be treated. I wasn't acting uh, the way you thought I should act. I wasn't speaking the way you thought I should speak. Mm-hmm. And so your love with me was conditional. Yeah. Was based on those things. Yeah. Your love with God was conditional. And I was the same way. I, I thought what, all I wanted was a wife that I could love and and be with and and have sex with and enjoy and that we would go and do amazing things for God together. And none of that felt like it was real. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, okay, so God, I wait for marriage. I save myself. I try and be pure, which in reality I wasn't my addiction to pornography, my other, you know, things that I was dealing with. Like I, I had a picture of who I was. I thought it was better than I was, but, and then I'm like, God, you owe me this thing. And you're not giving it to me. And so my relationship with God is, was transactional. Mm-hmm. Like, Hey, I did this thing. Now you do this thing. What, mm-hmm. what, are, what are you doing? And so I think that's a great thing you brought up that we, we think our relationship with God is something outside of what we choose. Mm-hmm. It's something that happens to us. Our, 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 our feelings. Like I feel close to God, Yeah, which is so dangerous. Yeah. Because I would imagine there was times when Paul, naked and beat in prison, did not feel close to God. I would imagine when Joseph was in the pit after being thrown in there by his brothers and then sold into slavery and then in, then lied about by the, the wife and then put in prison and forgotten about by the baker, like, you know, or the cupbearer. I, I, I believe there was times he did not feel close to God. Mm-hmm. But the truth would be is God was close mm-hmm. and was doing something very specific in all of those situations. Greater than what they could even have imagined. And so we don't get pictures in those stories of them saying, where's God? Where are you? Mm-hmm. God was close, whether they felt him close or not. And that is the reality that God is so close to us. He is not far off, even when we feel like he's far off. Was he close to us when we were enduring those four hard years of our marriage? He, he was probably closer than he, <laughs> it, it, when I look back, I'm like, Oh God was like there every moment. But did it feel like of it? that? It didn't know. It didn't feel like it. It felt like I, it felt like he was, I was praying and he was just ignoring me. Mm. It uh, felt like I was being picked on or that he's being vindictive. Like, Oh, I'm gonna, <laughs> like laughing at me. That's how I felt sometimes, mm. but that's not true at all. So just like we're talking about this falling in and out of love, what I felt about God was false. Mm. My feelings were lying to me. What changed? How did, how did you go from that to being, being able to choose to love God and remain faithful to him no matter what? Him confronting me with the truth that 
what he says is true and what I feel is false. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he, and he actually, uh, the, you know, I brought up J- Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He brought that story to my attention mm-hmm. and said, look what Jesus did mm-hmm. for you. Yeah. And he's like, are you not willing then to do the very little thing of like just loving your wife, even if you can't get what you want from her? Yeah. Like she's, what you, what it cost Christ on the cross is infinitely heavier than what you, what it's going to cost you to say yes to mm. your bride and keep going. Mm. And he just, he just revealed the fallacy in me that my feelings are true. And that that's how I'm going to dictate where I go and the direction I go and what I believe. And they're wrong. The, the, the Bible tells us, and we'll get to that scripture in a minute, just to not walk in the flesh, but to walk in the spirit. Let's talk more about that. Okay, so we're going to first go through kind of like a brief list of why why people feel as though they fall, air quotes here, out of love. So going back to like, you know, things that don't feel good, you know, yeah. like, and, and especially when it's in, when it's in conjuncture with your relationship with your spouse. Mm-hmm. So tough times. Yeah, hard circumstances. Like financial situations and and pain and suffering and, uh, confusion and those sorts of things, uh, you know, crazy things like loss of children, mm-hmm. uh, those hard things can immediately make us not feel good. Mm-hmm. And you know what, when we don't feel good, Christ wants us to lean on him. He wants us to have his strength and his peace, you know, that surpasses all understanding. And when we don't go to God for those things and we look to our spouse to fulfill them, which we did that. Yeah. It's, it's so dangerous. I remember feeling so disappointed in you and in our relationship because you couldn't do the things that I wanted you to be able to do, which for, yeah, only Christ you, to could fulfill do. those, those, those desires in your heart and to fulfill those or to take away the fears that you had yeah. and the insecurities and, and only God pl- gets to play that role in our yeah. life because you know what? We're, I'm a human. Yeah. And I, I remember, will fail I remember I tell you this, I, I even told you this when I asked you to be my wife. I said, I'm going to fail you. <laughs> yeah. I should have listened. <laughs> Jeez. I warned you. I gave you a little, you know, <laughs> Uh, what do you call it? A framework. I yeah. Don't know. <laughs> pre, a pre, I give you a pre warning. Yeah. Like, hey, this is what you're getting into. <laughs> okay. So yeah, tough times. Definitely. Um, needs not being met. So I'm over here thinking, no, I, I need this from you and, and being convinced that I can't continue on in my part right. until I get what I need. So in us, in our situation specifically, um, we couldn't have sex. Yeah. And that was, it was, it was painful very painful for me. And I'm thinking in my mind and in my heart and my spirit, okay, the one thing that my spouse is supposed to be able to give me that to, like directly to me physically is sex mm-hmm. and she can't give it to me. Well, there, then she can't give me like, I'm, I'm va- validated in my sin over here, or I'm, I'm allowed to be angry like this or God, how dare you? And so my love for you was dictated by what you can do for me mm-hmm. or what you're not doing for me. Mm-hmm. And vice versa. You you put me on that pedestal of, yeah. you know, holding you up emotionally and yeah. being strong for you when you weren't strong, and which husbands should do. But I'm not the main source of that. Right. I can never fulfill that. I can't that's called idolatry. And we mm-hmm. can we can actually put our spouses in a position of God. And what happens is because they're not God, you immediately translate that. We translate that to, oh, they must not love me. Mm. But God is love. And God is love. Your yeah. spouse isn't love. Yeah. Our, <laughs> Although your spouse is called to love you, God is love. He's yeah. the only one that can truly so fulfill that. So needs not being met spiritually, emotionally, physically. And, you know, I just want to mention that there are some relationships, you know, I think of veterans that have been uh, hurt mm-hmm. physically and they can't, or mentally, um, and, they're, and they might not be able to fulfill a certain marital role physically and emotionally and mentally. Mm-hmm. Does that mean they don't love you? Does that mean you've fallen out of love? No, mm-hmm. that's a that's a situation that God's allowed to happen, and and that has to be navigated in through the Word of God, through the Holy Spirit, in patience, in perseverance, mm-hmm. and recognize that those things don't define whether or not you're in love with your spouse or not. Mm-hmm. And that's a reality for some people. Yeah, there's some people that will permanently never be able to have sex, mm-hmm. and that that's a and that's just one thing. There's other people who that's can't, one thing, yeah. can't walk or can't talk or can't, there's a lot of things. There's like, people that have, uh, you deal with postpartum depression, um, you know, wives that moms that go through postpartum depression and they might not be able to, to give emotionally because, and that's going to take a husband to step up more. Be like, yeah. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to love more right now. Yeah. And I'm not going to make them feel like I'm abandoning them and, and skipping out. So 
Yeah. Um, okay. So another one would be um, desiring a different kind of life because of unmet expectations. And you kind of touched on this before, but I struggled with this. Um, I felt like I had these expectations of what marriage should be like. Yeah. What our life should be like, where we should be. And after years of not receiving that or them being unmet, um, I started desiring a different kind of life. And that right. can easily feed a wandering soul. Right. So we we fell in love and we we individually had unique pictures of what our relationship would look like, what our life would look like, what our marriage would look like. And so what we do is, well, this isn't, so I have this picture, picture A, and my picture is, and my, my marriage is picture Z. Oh, we must not be in love. This must not be right. Something's wrong here. Yeah. Let's throw this out, start over. And so we look over the fence, you know, or we look other places. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and this leads to happiness, Desiring happiness, desiring happiness. You know, sometimes we, you know, the Bible doesn't promise happiness, but being a Christian should guarantee if we choose it, joy, right? Which is more powerful, which is more powerful because Paul, when he was naked and beat and in prison had joy. Um, these, all the disciples, you know, all of the missionaries that have and martyrs had joy Mm -hmm. amidst terrible things. But happiness is not something necessarily promised. Now, happiness could be a fruit of joy. But does lack of happiness equate to lack of love? Like, we're no longer in love. I'm not happy anymore. And uh, I just, I want to speak about this happiness for a a second, Jennifer. I was just going to say, I hear it all the time. People say, doesn't God want me to be happy? Yeah. Well, not just doesn't God. They they actually, and I don't know who has taught them this, but they literally, they start their their message off to us about why they're leaving their husband with saying, God wants me to be happy and I'm not happy. Therefore I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, so they, they, what they've done is they've literally turned their disobedience and their sin into approval by God because Mm -hmm. they've equated happiness to God's will. And that's not true. Is there a scripture in the Bible that says God wants us to be happy? No, (laughs) not to my knowledge, Mm -hmm. but there's plenty about joy Mm -hmm. in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's something that can come amidst. So if happiness is God's will for us, take that truth, take that gospel to all of the people suffering through um, terminal cancer. Or famine. Or fa- yeah, hunger. Or loss of children or w- worse. Like I, I can't even come up with all the, the situations that a Christian might go through or even a person and go to them and say, hey, God wants you to be happy. And then the moment they're not happy, God doesn't, love me or I'm outside God's will. That's just, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a false gospel, but mm-hmm. the, the happiness is good and it comes, but I think joy, not think the Bible talks of joy, mm-hmm. which is a fruit of the spirit. Mm-hmm. Happiness is not a fruit of the spirit. So if we equate again, if we take words and we equal them to other things, like, so happiness equals love, happiness equals um, God's will. The moment we're not happy, boom, we're no mm-hmm. longer in love. We're not in God's will. We, we can make, all sorts of crazy decisions based off of that mm-hmm. equation. And it's just wrong. So moving down the list, um, we have two more. One is just dis- experiencing overall discontentment in life. And right. I, not I'm not happy with either. what I have. This isn't what I want that I want more. Just constantly like you're, you're, you know, playing that mental wheel over and over and over again about all the things that make you uh, not content. And then um, desiring a pain-free or comfortable life. Yeah, Which and, I think well, everybody at the root of their heart wants a pain-free life, but yeah. is that a reality? Uh, it can be. It's not that we need to pursue that. I don't think that's what our goal is in life. But if that's what our goal is in, in our marriage, if that's our definition of, of a good, healthy, loving mar- marriage, 100% of marriages are going to be let down. <laughs> <laughs> and But that's why we see such a high divorce rate in the church yeah. and in the world, because we've We've defined love with all of these terms, right? Comfort, happiness, fulfillment, you know, like uh, contentment. And if I don't feel those things, boom, I must not be in love anymore. Okay. So what's the bottom line? The bottom line is love was never intended to be just a feeling. Mm -hmm. God gave us these feelings as a gift to accompany our love. But when those feelings disappear, love doesn't disappear. That's, it's called the honeymoon phase. Like that, that's why they call it, like you're enamored with your spouse. There's everything's new and fresh, but what happens when it's not new and fresh? Mm-hmm. What happens when life's boring? Or what hard. happens when life's hard? Yeah. 
love in those situations should grow and endure because that, yeah, that because they endure, they, they, the relationship turns into um, one of stamina, Mm -hmm. endurance, perseverance. First Corinthians 13, seven says love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. (laughs) That's love. Not not some things, not the few things that I can handle. It's all things. So if we say that we love one another, we have to be able to bear all things and endure all things and have that kind of perseverance. And it comes down to that's what Christ did. Mm-hmm. He endured the cross because he loved us. Mm-hmm. And that's amazing. Even now in the church age and in the, in, the, in the age that we live in now where, where God's grace and mercy is just poured out on the world and he's being patient. Yeah. It says that his patience and kindness is to lead us to repentance. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and talking of love, mm-hmm. like he could just, why doesn't he just strike us all down? Because we're, we are sinners, you know, and, he, and he ha- he's righteous. We are not. And so, but he's patient with us. Mm-hmm. And, he's, and his love for us is in such a way that he shows us by example of how we should love. Mm-hmm. In forgiveness and patience and endurance, because that's what Christ did on the cross. He took the sins of the world, that anyone who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That is love. And that if, if, if Christ can love that way, and this is what God told, you know, showed me, he's like, if Christ can love you like this, Aaron, like what, what has your wife ever done? That's worse than what you, what you or the world has done to, to, to me, Mm -hmm. nothing, Mm -hmm. literally, it doesn't matter what you do to me. It should be, it should, it's not unforgivable. So I guess I would just say, if love is based on something that we have no control over, something that happens to us. If love is is a feeling, then we're literally basing the most beautiful thing that God has ever given us, love, which he is love. It's his, it's who he is. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're, we boiled it down to a fleshly thing mm-hmm. like that. It's a fleeting, like, Oh, some might get it. Some might not. And I think we, we should rather look at love as a muscle mm-hmm. that I needs like to that. be strengthened, exercised, um, or actually here's a better, uh, analogy. Love is a seed. Mm. You plant a seed and then you nurture it and you grow it. Our love started, I should say, I didn't, we didn't fall in love. Our love started back when we were dating, mm-hmm. when we were learning each other. We and were attracted to one another. We were attracted. We, we chose to spend time with one another. Yeah. Back then our love was so, if you, if you think about it, our love was so immature Yeah, because it was based on very, uh, uh, vain things, Mm -hmm. how we looked, how we talked, how we spent time with each other, things that made us laugh. Yeah. And now our love is based on like so much more. Oh my, so much more surviving hard things, flourishing in hard things, um, renewing in the way we think about each other, communication, Mm -hmm. knowledge, ministering to our kids, ministering to others. Yeah. Having, having children and learning how to become one in our parenting. And so our love now is built it's, it's growing. I wouldn't say it's like a big sycamore tree or something, but <laughs> I would say it's a, it's a tree now where it once was just this seed that could easily be stamped out if we didn't take care mm-hmm. of it. And so I think that is a more accurate way to take a picture is that love was something we planted. We chose to plant, mm-hmm. Hey, we're going to take a risk on this seed. We're going to love this. I'm going to, and, and let's grow it. Mm-hmm. So then if that's the case, then falling out of love air quotes again is really choosing to let the tree die. Right. Which, I mean, going back to that quote by Gary Thomas from Sacred Marriage, uh, biblical love isn't hate, it's apathy. Letting it die. Letting it die. Stop watering it, stop feeding it, stop giving it sunlight, smother it. Um, And it can even be worse than that, intentionally harming the love Mm. because you want out, Mm. because you're not happy. And now doing very hateful, um, wicked things within the marriage. Being disrespectful, letting your anger lash out. Cheating. Cheating. Uh, yeah, unfaithfulness with your heart, yeah. um, eyes, f- physically. All things that are lack of self-control because you're not exercising that muscle of self-control. Mm-hmm. So here's another quote uh, from Sacred Marriage by Gary Thomas. And it says this, Christian love is an aggressive movement, an active commitment. In reality, we choose where to place our affections, which goes back to like, are we going to choose to nurture our love seed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a weird, uh, but the, the, this tree that we're growing together, mm-hmm. you know, as we're being weaved together and we're growing at, at the, you know, this love. And I, I just love that picture that it's an, aggr- it's an aggressive movement and active commitment. Yeah. 
that we are not going to just whimsically and apathetically see if love continues on without us doing anything Mm -hmm. that we're going to recognize that it's no, no, I I'm going to choose again to love you today. And then when something happens, I'm going to actually, I'm going to choose right now Mm -hmm. to love you anyway. Yeah. And I like that is that this quote, um, you know, when it says in reality, we choose where to place our affections. I think sometimes we can choose to place our affections on what we see outside the marriage. So let's just give them some practical ways. Cause now we've just, we've dispelled it. You don't fall in and out of love. It's a, it's a lie. The enemy uses it to break up marriages all the time. And as mature Christians, we're going to pursue loving our spouses the biblical way. Mm-hmm. And saying, yes, Lord, I'm going to choose to love because you are love and I want to love Mm -hmm. like this. So what are some practical things that are the couples listening can start thinking about, start pursuing and saying, oh, we're going to, we're going to invest in this seed that we planted (laughs) at whatever point that seed was planted. Okay. So first thing I'd say is intimacy. Um, and not just like, I, I think I had this idea in our marriage that intimacy just happened and it was something that was natural. Um, it was always getting magical. Yeah. I came to find out it's actually something that needs to be planned for and prepared for and requires intentionality. And so I would say, um, be intentional in pursuing one another in those ways. And intimacy is a lot of different things. It's not just physical. It's also in the way that you communicate and, you know, just being thoughtful of one another. Yeah. But don't uh, intimacy, the physical intimacy cannot be neglected. Sure. So important. But the emotional intimacy can't be neglected either. Either. Yeah. And you know, the Bible, I just wanted to bring this up. It uses the word new or knowledge when it comes to physical intimacy in the Bible. It says mm-hmm. so and so new, so and so. Yeah. And it's talking about sex. Yeah. This intimacy we're talking about is just it's it's radical transparency, radical openness that you're not afraid to be naked emotionally, naked physically, naked spiritually mm-hmm. before your spouse. And that you know each other. And that's a lifelong pursuit. Yeah. So, and that combats uh, falling out of love yeah. or feeling like you're falling out of love um, or in the truth, choosing to not love anymore. Yeah. And if you do feel like, you know, not that you're apathetic towards one another, but that you just have some um, isolating tendencies going on in your marriage, be the first one to initiate an intimacy. Yeah. Go, go open those doors. <laughs> yeah. Go open those windows. Let light in. Okay, another one is um, have an eternal perspective and a hope that fuels your heart so that you can persevere. Having a, a hope for, you know, why we're doing this thing called marriage and mm-hmm. what we have to look forward to changed, you know, the way that we were able to persevere in our relationship. Yeah, and so recognizing that my wife is also my sister in the Lord. Mm-hmm. Like the Bible tells us how to interact with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. Um, that I get to see her and say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to treat her well. She's mm-hmm. my closest neighbor. Yeah. So I'm going to love her as myself. She's, mm-hmm. I'm going to treat her. I'm going to use the gifts that God's given me to bless her mm-hmm. and to serve her. And so if we recognize that, that we are both part of the body, then we're not going to mistreat and, you know, take advantage of and do things that we wouldn't do to another believer. So another one is discipline yourself in walking faithfully and humbly. So real quick, I just want to read um, one other quote. I know this is a heavy Gary Thomas uh, <laughs> episode, but well, this book was hugely influential in our, yeah. You, our if you guys haven't read sacred marriage by Gary Thomas, you should definitely go grab a copy. But on page 156, it says this, one of the great spiritual challenges for any Christian is to become less self-absorbed. We are born intensely. Fe- we are born intensely self-focused. The discipline of Christian marriage calls us into the Christian reality of sharing and enjoying fellowship in a uniquely intimate way, maintaining an interest in and empathy for someone else is by no means an easy discipline to maintain, but it is a vital one. It is a skill that must be learned. I love this quote because I think it's so important to recognize that um, there is discipline required of us. And there's an obligation, like I said earlier, to one another, um, to to love one another, but to also enjoy fellowship with each other, which is what Gary's mm-hmm. saying right here, and to maintain an interest for an empathy for each other. And again, that he says, this isn't easy but it is vital and it's something that we need to learn. And, yeah. and and like you said, it's a muscle that we should be exercising. Yeah. A lot of times the Bible uses the the term walk in love. <laughs> so it's, it, it's something that you walk out yeah. on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, and in first John, it says practice righteousness. Yeah. So these are things that we get to practice toward each other, with each other, mm-hmm. for each other on a daily basis, on a moment by moment. Yeah. And even if you're in a super, super hard s- situation and season of your marriage, mm-hmm. you can right now choose to walk in love 
with your spouse. And truly, this is walking in maturity. This is what yeah. makes us mature is by by choosing to walk this way. Yeah. So again, walking in maturity, I would say be okay with hardship and ask God how it can be used to mature you, mm-hmm. to mature us. So God, this season's hard. God, I don't feel in love. I don't yeah. feel close to my spouse. Help me. Show me how, how I should see correctly. Mm-hmm. Show me where I can change. Show me how I can love my wife still, love my husband still. How can I serve them? Mm-hmm. Help me do it in your spirit. And then another one is, uh, the last one actually, is recognize there's something greater at risk. It's what we talk about in the the Marriage After God book, is that our marriages are meant for more than just happily ever after. Mm -hmm. Having a good, strong, healthy, mature, growing, thriving, loving, intimate marriage isn't for that alone. Mm -hmm. That's not the end. It's the means to the end. The end is that we are witnesses for Christ, that we are preaching the gospel with our words and our lives, that our marriages are pictures of the gospel to the world, that the husband represents Christ, that the wife represents church, that their relationship represents a uh, a unconditional love that Christ had for his church and how we interact with each other and how we raise our children and how we treat each other. And and so, and not just that, but in first Timothy chapter three, it talks about um, the, the ministry of an overseer in a church and how it's a, it's a noble task. It's a noble thing for any believer to pursue any, any man in the church. And, and it talks about having one wife and managing their home well. And it says, how can you manage the household of God if you can't manage your own home? Right. If there, if there's no self-control within me, if there's no love between me and my wife, if my children don't honor me and cherish me. And, and it, those are things that the Bible says are results of how we choose to walk with our spouse. And our authority, our power, our um, message gets diluted or destroyed when we don't mm. love that way. When love is something that we can just fall out of, then it just, it's what it essentially is saying is God can just fall out of love. Like, oh, I'm today I don't love you anymore. And that's just false. He is love. He cannot not love us. Mm-hmm. And so we, sh- we need to show that. And so the, the greater thing that's at risk is the gospel. Mm. And when we just, when we don't have a correct understanding and this definition of love in our marriage and what that looks like, we show an incorrect gospel to the world. And I, and just, and we need to recognize that. So the beginning of this episode started with, can you fall out of love in marriage? Uh, that wouldn't be the right way to say it. It would be, are you choosing to not love your spouse anymore? And so I think that this is a really important topic and it's something that we should address, even if maybe you're not feeling this way. If you feel like, you know, you love your spouse and you're, you know, walking the way you should be biblically, um, I think it's still important to address some of these things and and these practical things that we've brought up, um, you know, and just see, you know, evaluate your marriage and see, are you, are you walking the way that God wants you to be walking um, and are you choosing love regardless of your circumstances and regardless of anything mm-hmm. else that's going on? Yeah. And maybe you're not, um, like we, like Jennifer said, not maybe at that place of not in love anymore, but are you choosing apathy? Mm. Are you just not caring? Are you being lazy? Yeah. Are you being lazy? And that, I think that's something that we should be aware of and repent of if we are, mm-hmm. if we're being lazy in our marriage, then we're not loving. We're kind of being so, self-focused and hoping that our, our husband or our wife is going to love us the way we want to be loved, but we're not going to give the love the way we want to be loved. Mm-hmm. And I just, I, I just don't think that's the way a Christian should walk. And I think we need to, I mean, I'm guilty of this mm-hmm. sometimes and we, we need to change like, Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm being lazy. I'm going to step up. Yeah. I love you. Let's work on this. Let's grow. Let's, let's, let's water this tree. <laughs> love it. Okay. Um, we want to invite you guys to join us in prayer. Dear Lord, may we always choose love. May we always have hearts that are motivated by love to be unified, pursuing intimacy and peace in marriage. Thank you for equipping us and empowering us by your Holy Spirit to choose to love unconditionally and sacrificially. We pray against our flesh from getting in the way, and we pray against our selfish ways. Please continue to sanctify us and transform us so that we would be more like you. Protect our marriage from the threats of the enemy and his evil desire to tear us down. Lord, please help us to be unified as one and help us to love each other in the way we interact with each other every day. May our commitment to remain steadfast in our love for each other glorify you in our marriage. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, we just want to thank everyone for listening this week, and we pray that this episode blessed you. 
We pray that it's going to cause some good conversations and uh, we look forward to having you next week. Did you enjoy today's show? If you did, it would mean the world to us if you could leave us a review on iTunes. Also, if you're interested, you can find many more encouraging stories and resources at marriageaftergod.com and let us help you cultivate an extraordinary marriage.